You want to use reverb on a live console in a live show, but you're not really sure what all the knobs and controls do? I mean, come on, if I ask you what is diffusion? Yeah, you probably can't explain it, and that's why you clicked on this video, so let's get right into it. We're gonna need pulses of pink noise to run them through the reverb to figure out how each knob works and what it does, and why pink noise, not some other instrument, because pink noise covers all the frequency spectrum that we humans can hear. Great, but how do you get these pulses? You can either download a pink noise audio file and chop it up, but you're doing live sound, who has time for this? So we're gonna do it on the console. You're gonna need a gate and a click track or a metronome. By the way, quick tip, just type on Google metronome and here's your free Google metronome. I'm using the Midas M32 because I own it, but what I'm about to show you isn't specific to any kind of mixer. Quarter inch to eighth inch jack, plug that into your phone or laptop and add into the mixer. So now we have the click track on aux number one, but I'm gonna remove it from the main mix because this is just a trigger, we don't need to hear it. Then go to the monitor section, go to oscillator, and on bus number one, I'm gonna generate pink noise. This is bus number one. Then go to channel number one, select it, and set the input of it as bus number one. And now we have pink noise on channel number one. I'm gonna activate the gate. Then set the key as aux number one. And now we have pink noise pulses. Then go to bus 14 because I have the reverb there and click flip fader, then send channel number one to bus 14. All right, let's start with the controls. First one, the K. That's an easy one. It's how long the reverb lasts before it dies out. Basically the length of the reverb, but do not confuse it with room size. Yes, sometimes a bigger room has a longer decay time, but that's not always the case. This is a very small room, but it sounds huge! Which leads me to the next point, room size. Okay, so decay and room size are two different things. So what does the room size knob exactly do if it's not affecting the length of the reverb? Imagine I'm in a small room, all the walls are very close to me. If I speak, my voice will hit the walls and get back to my ears almost at the same time because the distance is very short. However, if I'm in a bigger room, my voice will hit the closest wall first, then it will hit a further wall, then maybe the ceiling is very high, it will take more time to hit the ceiling and get back to my ears. So, if these are the reflections in a small room, they are close together, in a bigger room, they spread apart. There is more time between one reflection and the other. Free delay. This has nothing to do with room acoustics at all. It's just a period of time before you start hearing the reverb. So for example, if the free delay is at zero milliseconds, you'll hear the dry signal and the reverb at the exact same time. If it's a hundred milliseconds, you'll hear the dry signal, and then a hundred milliseconds later, you'll start hearing the reverb. If you're using it on vocals and it sounds kind of muddy, you may want to increase the pre-delay to hear the dry signal of the vocal nice and clear, and then start hearing the reverb. Diffusion. This is the best way I can explain it. It's basically scattering the reflections because sound waves, when they hit the wall at a certain angle, they leave the wall at the same angle. But if there was a diffuser here, it would redirect all the reflections in all different directions. So it becomes less defined and more mushy. The sun is going down, so let's be quick. Damping, what does it do? It controls the amount of high frequencies in the reverb. It's not a high cut filter.
basically the sensitivity of the reverb to these higher frequencies. How much of these higher frequencies trigger the reverb to reproduce them. Which leads me to the three main types of reverb. Room reverb, which is a small to medium sized room. Hall reverb, which is a very big room. And a plate reverb. This is a plate reverb. It's a large thin piece of metal that vibrates and it sounds like reverb. We put a little speaker in front of it that plays a certain signal that causes these vibrations and we record these vibrations with a pickup. There's also spring reverb which is literally a few small springs that make sound. Some guitar players use that but I don't want to make this video too long. However, there's one more important thing that you may want to know. But before I tell you what it is, if you're finding this video helpful so far, consider giving it a like to help it spread to more people and let's get into the last point reverb ducking it's when the reverb gets quieter as you sing into the microphone and it gets louder again automatically when you stop singing Love, i teach you how to do live reverb ducking in this video right here so click here and i'll see you in the next video